always try to do, I try to avoid, you know, standing behind uh, a desk because it puts a separation between me and uh, the audience. First, I'm really uh, delighted to be standing in front of you here this afternoon. I'm, I feel honored to have been invited by Philippe and Zaza Shabur again, uh, two years later, you know, to address this group. I have massive uh, respect and admiration for Philippe and for Zaza and for what they are doing for Lebanon. It's amazing, I was listening to Philippe now, you know, the fact that he has uh, given so far 2,000 scholarship over the last 20 years is massive. And I remember what I, he shared with me a few days ago, we were having lunch together about the impact of every scholar. Apparently, you know, every scholar will have an impact on 55 people. So imagine about the exponential, you know, ripple effect that these scholarships have on uh, the society in Lebanon. Most importantly, you know, all of us know very well that education is the most important social elevator. So we give you the opportunity to have this platform, this springboard, and from here, you know, you go and make marvels in the world, as we have heard uh, so far from Sami. The second reason why I'm excited to be here, because I see this as my obligation, you know, to interact with the new generation and at the same time, you know, share my learnings, hoping that, you know, this might be beneficial for you, for your future. And the third key reason is for me to learn from you, because I think also it's very important for every leader to hear what is on the mind of the future generation of leaders, what are your worries, what are your concerns, what are the key areas that are critical for you, for me to be up to speed with what you know, the millennials generation is expecting in my organization. The title of my uh, presentation is Full of Hope. Why is that? Um, I make it a point when I'm interacting with a, young, with a young generation in Lebanon to talk about hope. Because, you know, my generation is the war generation. And even during the worst time of the war, you know, our generation had hope. But sometimes I feel when I'm interacting with the young people in Lebanon, they are hopeless. And I see it as my obligation is to turn them from hopeless to hopeful. And this is why I've even, you know, batched it as full of hope. Now, I, I don't have many slides. Uh, you know, I have like uh, 14 or 15 slides. I will whiz the, through them very quickly in order for us to keep enough time for the dialogue. Can I just see a very quick show of hands of who knows about the company that I work for, Firminish, and who understands our industry? Okay, just a few people. It's not a surprise. Well, um, look, I'll do this very quickly. You know, what we do, uh, you know, we are the flavors and fragrance. This is an industry that is very sophisticated, you know, very refined, and we touch every day 4 billion consumers all over the world. At least at home, you will have 20 brands that, are, that have the furnish inside, you know, the same way that you think about the internet inside. And we fragrance and flavors, you know, most of the brands of global and local regional companies that you have at home. There is not a single big company in the world that doesn't have Firminish as their supplier of fragrance and flavors. So the way I always structure this is uh, mainly in three buckets. So you think about performance, you know, we, we are a company that perform well. You know, we have almost four billion US dollars in terms of net revenue. We grow our business last calendar year by over 7%, which means we're gaining market share in a very competitive industry. At the same time, you know, we're building our business for the future. We did 10 acquisitions over the last three years. You know, we invest th almost 400 million US dollars in research and development every single year. We have uh, almost 4,000 life patents because our business is driven by science. We have 450 scientists. 250 of these scientists have uh, a PhD in science, and this gives us a significant edge on our competitors. And at the same time, we are an extremely responsible company. You know, we have 8,000 colleagues all over the world. We have offices and facilities and uh, filials in 100 countries. And at the same time, we have 35 manufacturing facilities all over the world. Most importantly, you know, we are a company that cares. You know, we care about our people and we care about the planet. We are one of only seven companies in the world 
that has received last year a, a certification of 100% uh, gender equality employer globally, so across our 100 countries. So only seven companies in the world have this 100% uh, uh, percent, uh, gender equality certification globally. At the same time, we are one of only two companies in the world that have received uh, AAA from CDP. It's only Firminish and L'Oreal out of the 7,000 companies that are assessed by CDP to have received this AAA. A for climate, A for forestry, and A for water. That might be the only pitch uh, about you know, what we do in our business. Now, let me turn about me. You know, I'm like most of you. Uh, you know, I am, I'm Lebanese, very proud to be Lebanese. Uh, uh, grew up in Lebanon, went to school in Lebanon, uh, Sacre Coeur and Mola Sal. I was not good enough to go to Jamhur, you know, where Philippe and Sami went uh, to. You know, they were very, you know, sophisticated for, you know, my background. And at the same time, I went to UASG. I didn't come to AUB. And uh, what I did at UASG, I want to, I did business, gestion des entreprises. And when people ask me, why did you go to gestion? I will tell them it's easy, it is by default, because I checked what faculty in Lebanon then accepted students without a concours. Because this was the only faculty, faculty de gestion, that took students without a concours, without a test. That's why I ended up doing the gestion. I did my gestion, after the gestion, I did a maîtrise uh, in marketing, and here you go. I didn't go to Harvard, I only went to Harvard in 2001, where I, did, uh, I joined this advanced management program that was like a crammed MBA for three and a half months on campus uh, in Boston, but that's it, it, that's it. So I have relied significantly on my educational background in Lebanon. Uh, I have been married to Rula for the last 33 years, so one wife in 33 years, so this is an achievement. Uh, together we have uh, lived all over the world, so we were really fortunate and lucky. We lived on four continents. Actually, we have changed 21 houses in 33 years of marriage. So my wife has a PhD in economics, and she could qualify for another PhD in logistics and in house management because of all the moves that we have done throughout my career. I dedicate lots of time, beside my day job, uh, to you know, interact with the young generation. That's why I'm excited to be with you. So you could see here, you know, over the last three months, I was in Wharton at INSEAD. I have spent time with the uh, young generation at the World Bank. And all of these conferences that I'm giving, I believe in, a, in a, a business model that is about inclusive capitalism. And I spend time advocating and championing this inclusive capitalism business model with the new generation uh, during my uh, downtime. Now, what have I learned through my, throughout my 33 years of leadership career? I will sum it up in three key messages. The first one, take charge. So it's a little bit like Sammy. You know, I was listening to Sammy. I said, oh, well, I'm inspired by this guy. He brought me back like almost 30 years. And I'm saying, exactly, you know, that's the right message. And I'm so glad to have followed Sammy here on stage. Take charge of your career and think legacy. Think about your impact on others. So it's exactly what Philippe is doing. It's not only him being successful and, you know, inspirational and an outstanding role model but also you know, how can you impact others? How can you help others? How can you inspire others? And what are you going to do to give back? The second one is about you know, keep reinventing yourself. Think up, out of the box. When you feel you're in your comfort zone, say this is not good enough. Okay, now I need to put my, expose myself, put myself in an uncomfortable position so I can learn, so I can grow, so I can keep reinventing myself. And you will be amazed, you know, that, you know, how uh, there is no limitation for you growing and making a difference. The third one is foster an amazing teamwork. And we are not good at this as Lebanese. That's why I wanted to reinforce this message. You know, Lebanese, we are very uh, individualistic. You know, it's all about the person and it's not about the team. Work very hard. Surround yourself with people better than you so you could, you know, reach new heights. I want to try to make this session as engaging as possible. So who could help me with this? You know, what happened in 1989? Well, uh, I'm not talking about Lebanon. Hab Tahrir, I, I <laughs> you know, the Berlin Wall, for example, you know, people will say, okay, the Berlin Wall. 
Any other thoughts? Oil crisis, no? Okay, well, I'll tell you what happened in uh, uh, 18, uh, 1989. Obviously, the Berlin Wall fall and, you know, free word for all. But what happened also in 1989 transformed your life and offered you a platform of amazing opportunities and has had a significant impact on your generation. And it is the internet. And it is very important, you know, to take this into consideration. Let me share with you, for example, you know, what used to happen during my days. Because now, you know, with the, with the internet, you know, it has created a technology revolution and it is, has empowered every one of you. Uh, Sami was sharing his own experience. And maybe you don't realize what my generation went through. Uh, you know, I was sharing with you when I was at USG. If I wanted access to information, I had to go to the library, take a, a, a ticket, queue to get my turn. When I get my turn to try to get this information, I used to have access to a book or an encyclopedia. And this book or this encyclopedia would have been printed 10 years ago. So the information that I was aspiring to get access to was completely obsolete. Now, every one of you could have access to the same level of information that anyone could have in Manhattan, in Beijing, in Utah, or in uh, 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 any city in the world. It's up to you to take charge and go and search. And this is unbelievable because this has offered you an open playing field. If you are based in any city in Lebanon, like if you're based in you know, the top tier cities in the world. Obviously, technology you know, uh, 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 gave an amazing opportunity for talent. Uh, you know, consumers have far more awareness. You know, the awareness and the transparency and the access to for information is so uh, you know, unbelievable. And at the same time, it fostered so much new innovation and, to, and it has enabled people to create many new business models. You know, thinking about LinkedIn, you know, Sami was talking about LinkedIn. LinkedIn was acquired by Microsoft at 22 billion US dollars. And what is LinkedIn? At the end of the day, you populate it, you put your resumes on it. So you know, the amount of work, it was the idea that was key. And it is all about database. So Microsoft paid 22 billion US dollars for the database. The biggest search company in the world is Egan Zender. The enterprise value of Egan Zender is two billion. This gives you an idea of you know, the value that the new uh, uh, industry revolution and the technology have created in a business that is you know, a basic business of search agency. And the, 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 powerful, the power of search was all about data. Now the data is public and you're populating it every single day. So this is the difference. You think about Uber. You know, Uber has created a $40 billion industry that didn't exist in the past and at the same time you know, made the lives of people easier. So there will be always you know, new opportunities that this uh, you know, technology revolution is creating, you know, creating lots of co competition where you know, industries are joining forces like you see in the, in the mobility on electric cars, you know, the car industry is completely rethinking its model. And at the same time, every single company and business model in the world has been disrupted which is fostering you know, even more creativity and you know, more transformation so you could always stay, want to stay ahead of your game and keep reinventing yourself. Now, thinking about disrupting business models, uh, I, I guess most of you know IKEA. Can I see a show of hands of the people who have ever shopped in IKEA and know about IKEA? Okay, let me tell you about IKEA. IKEA you know, has been existing for the last 75 years. They have an amazing business model, and their business model has been the same for the last 50, 75 years. They open these big stores in the suburbs. You take your car or your truck. You take a big cart. You shop around. You go into this maze. You get your stuff. You put it on your cart. You take it. You put it in your car. You take it home, and you install it yourself. Guess what happened with IKEA? Because you know, they have resisted changing their business model and over the last 10 years, although consumer changes, uh, consumer dynamics and consumer habits were changing, they kept resisting it. Last year, they have announced that their profits dipped by 40% and they are firing 7,500 people. Why? Because they, didn't, they kept resisting the change and they didn't want to reinvent their business model. 
What IKEA is doing today, they have changed completely almost everything. So from being in the suburbs, they have decided to open small stores in cities. They have decided to have a smaller connection, collection in the cities of the items that you might need every single day. They have decided to have a ser delivery service at home, and at the same time, we have resisted there for ages to have you order on the net. You can now order on the net, they can deliver it at home, and they can install it for you. At the same time, they are testing two mo new models in Switzerland and in France where you could rent furniture. So they don't want even to sell you furniture. You could rent furniture for six months, for a year, for two years, in case you are there on an assignment in the city, you don't like them, you send them back. So this is how you, know, you need to keep reinventing yourself, you need to keep thinking, rethinking your business model to keep transforming yourself and at the same time adapting yourself to new market realities. Uh, we were talking about, uh, you know, Limitless access to information. This is what your generation has uh, the opportunity for. You know, data is the new currency. We use the example of LinkedIn. So 22 billion, you know, for the data that you populate every single day. This is what Microsoft was prepared to pay for this. Broadband is the new highway. So it is not about bridges. It's not about roads. It's not about railway. It's about broadband. So this is why you know, broadband and speed of internet is important you know, to uh, give you an edge and at the same time to make sure you could leverage these new technologies. Uh, lower barriers to entry. Think about it you know, during my days. You know, if I was an entrepreneur and I wanted to launch a brand, you know, I'm a marketeer, you know, I've graduated from the university, I want to launch a brand. You know, I want to build a manufacturing facility. You know, I want to bring engineers, you know, technical people, you know, just be able to, you know, create the brand. Then I need a big marketing agency, you know, to be able to uh, drive a big uh, promotional ad. I need to go work very hard, you know, to get the listing with Spinney's, with Carrefour, you know, with, you know, all uh, on with all of these retailers to get my product accepted and pay, uh, pay very high listing fees. You don't need to do any of this now. You know, what do you need to do is have a good idea a good concept that consumers could accept. You know, you could, you know, outsource the production. You could go to, for a very good, nice friend blogger to say, look, test this product for me. It looks great, and if he loves it, you know, he could promote it to his followers, and at the same time, you could accept orders and sell them on the net. You had completely overcome, uh, you know, the, the traditional, uh, you know, retail model and sell direct, and when your brand will become big enough, you could go to the retailers and avoid paying fees. The best example on this one is Peter Rahal. If you Google Peter Rahal, you know, Peter, Peter Rahal is a Lebanese. He created this brand, RX, uh, um, RX uh, Protein. Uh, he ended up selling his brand by, of, for 660 million US dollars to Kellogg's. You know, he created his brand out of a garage. Uh, he just uh, capitalized on this trend of you know, snacking and snack bars and created R RX. Google Peter Rahal, he has been extremely successful. This is what your generation has access to today. From producers to consumers, one click away. You know, today what you could see in Europe or what you could see even in the US or even in some parts in Lebanon, you know, you could live in uh, uh, any city in the suburbs. And uh, you know, if you're a fisherman or if you are a, a, a farmer, you could produce and you could sell your products direct. You could completely overcome you know, the central dasha, and this is how, you know, farmers are making higher margins, you know, fishermen are making higher margins, consumers could be, be sure that they are buying fresh produce, you know, all the organic products that they need, they could buy them direct uh, on the net, which offers a great opportunity and could turn every person into an entrepreneur where they can connect directly with consumers. Uh, uh, new trends, brands, categories, choices, I'll give you an example that is amazing. All of you have heard about Beyond Meat and Impossible Burger, so everything that is about meat analog, and it's just plant-based protein. It's not meat protein, it's plant-based protein. This is a 140 million, uh, uh, a billion US dollars category in 10 years. So it gives you an idea about the new categories that are being created every single day that didn't exist in the past. And you think about your generation, you know, for someone who is going into school today, 60% of the jobs of the future have not been created yet. So there are plenty of opportunities for the people who want to go after them. 
And here I've talked about the meat analog. We didn't talk about the milk uh, uh, alternatives or the fish alternatives that are also plant-based and they are also very relevant. You know, one idea, if uh, you might be interested, you know, most of these, uh, you know, um, meat analogs are driven by peas, petit pois. You know, and the petit pois uh, category in the world, you know, used to be 7 million tons. This will go up very quickly to 200 million tons, mainly driven by the need for, you know, these uh, petit pois and these peas, because this is the base, you know, in all of these, uh, uh, you know, meat uh, plant analogs. Unprecedented access to cash and crowdfunding. Sami was sharing his experience uh, about you know, raising cash. Uh, if you want to Google it tonight, you know, try Jeremy Fragrance. Jeremy uh, is, a, uh, is a very nice German guy that I know personally. And Jeremy uh, you know, lives obviously in, in Germany and he loves fragrances. And you know, he used to have this blog and every day he used to test fragrances and share his experience with uh, you know, 800,000 followers that he has. And one day he got the idea, he said, look, you know, I want to create my own perfume, but I don't have money. And you know, he reached out to his followers and he asked them to fund his perfume. And guess what, you know, he received, uh, he was over 10 times more subscribed for, of the money he needed to create his own perfume. And he is the only brand in the world that is selling 300 uh, uh, bottles of fragrance every day at 250 euros the bottle without even anyone tasting it. So because usually you go, you smell, you put it on your skin to see if you like it. He's selling 300 uh, bottles of fragrance every day, you know, and he, not, nobody is tasting it, $250 a bottle. All of this is created by you know, new technologies and all of these opportunities. Um, startup movements and thinking about the, the, the new businesses, you know, new businesses, bloggers, influencers, micro influencers. You know, just to give you an idea, seven billion US dollars of marketing is invested every year with influencers. Seven billion dollars. All of this didn't exist. And as an influencer, you just need to have a good concept to be credible and you could run it out of home. So this offers you plenty of opportunities. Drones, you know, create 40,000 jobs. In the virtual uh, reality is a $7 billion industry. So the Internet of Things will, will offer plenty of opportunities for every one of you, yet you just need to have limitless ambition and outstanding creativity. I will share with you three key examples that I think you know, marked me on what uh, you know, people could create. Because you, you don't need necessary to do like Sammy, you know, create a new trend or you know, reinvent something with artificial intelligence. And uh, these are the, and, and I hope that you know, with the picture that I have painted that I can see sm some smiles on the faces of people. So you turned into hopeful and hopefully when I finish my presentation, I would have moved you also you know, from hopeful to full of hope. These are my three examples. Um, uh, do you know this, uh, uh, this technology, Ring? In case you don't know it, I suggest you Google it tonight. The creator's name is Jamie Siminoff, not Smirnoff, like the vodka, Jamie Siminoff. And what Jamie Sin Siminoff has done, he has not created anything. The ring is the normal uh, doorbell uh, that we used to have you know, during the old days. And you know, the, his creation is the same. And what he has done, he has combined four technologies, the camera, that he did not create, the mobile device, the mobile devices, the GPS, and the voice recognition. And what you could do now, you know, and he launched it in the US, you know, you could have this, uh, you know, uh, a ring technology with a camera, with a voice recognition, and uh, this is linked to cameras and uh, lights around your house. And if someone comes closer to your house, you know, you have lights on, driven by the sensors, and at the same time, you know, he could see you in the camera and he can talk to you. You know, he could be in the Caribbean on, on the shore and he could talk to you as if he is behind his door. You know, this, is, this became a massive success. And please Google Ring uh, tonight. And Amazon ended up acquiring this from Jamie for $1.2 billion. Why did Amazon buy it? 31% of Amazon packages get stolen and 41% don't buy online 
because they are concerned about theft. But these are the opportunities that are accessible to every one of you. You just need to dare. I'll give you another example. You know, think about Uber. And the idea here is don't be shy of stealing and reapplying. You know, Uber came in the US. You know, some people in the Middle East said, it looks like a good idea. Let's create our own Uber that is Kareem in the Middle East. And they started in Dubai. Uber started uh, three, four years later, you know, acquired Kareem for 3.1 billion US dollars. So steal and reapply. You know, just you know, go on the net, check new ideas that are coming up in San Francisco, in the US, in India. The third biggest hotel operator in the world today is called Oyo. Do you, have you heard about Oyo? O-Y-O? Google it tonight. 19 years old Indian guy, you know, created this company. Existing today in 25 countries in the world, third biggest hotel operator in the world. But these are the opportunities that you could have access for every one of you. Uh, this is Emily Weiss. I know Emily very well because you know, Emily started as a blogger. And Emily today has a company that has a valuation of $1.2 billion. And Emily is competing today you know, with her brand Glossier uh, with the likes of Estee Lauder and L'Oreal in the luxury uh, beauty industry. And Emily started as a blogger. You know, she, she had a good followers. You know, Emily, I think, is 31 or 32 years old. An amazing lady, extremely smart, with a small team. They have created uh, this brand, Glossier. And, you know, we have created her own perfume. And she is becoming extremely successful. And now her company is valued for $1.2 billion. So this is what your generation could create. And you have plenty of opportunities to go after all of this. Now, to put it in context, you know, there was 3.5 billion US dollars of startup fund uh, in the Middle East over the last three years, uh, you know, for people who had great ideas. And at the same time, if you want to take it in the context of Lebanon, I have seen an article in the press that was quite interesting. 50% of the top 100 brands in Lebanon didn't exist 25 years ago. So every generation, you know, keep reinventing itself, keep creating opportunities that some other people didn't see, and you, will, you are the best position in order to understand the new consumer trends and the opportunities of the, that the people like you are excited about. Let me give you a few uh, tips uh, that you might uh, find useful. You know, obviously, I've always believed that your attitude dictates your altitude in life. So if you are someone that is ambitious, that is driven, that has a positive mindset, you know, you have lots of doors that will be open for you. Uh, first, you know, believe in yourself because, you know, you might have a genius in yourself that is hidden somewhere. It's up to you to really find it and, you know, go after it. Second, surround yourself with people better than you. This is what I have done throughout my career and this helped me to be, uh, you know, successful so far. Uh, be open to win-win partnerships. You know, always leave something on the table. Don't think about a win-lose because you will get a win-lose once, but always look for a win-win to make sure that uh, other people benefit from your success. Foster an amazing teamwork, and at the same time, constantly reinvent yourself and follow your passion. I strongly believe that ordinary people could achieve extraordinary things in life, and I'm sure you know, you could be one of them. I want to thank you for listening to me, and I will turn it over to you for questions. Thank you. Does Full of Hope now resonate with you? Yeah? Yes? Perfect. Philippe?